Welcome to Insights this week. We are actually going to do something a little different. We are going to look at the Beatitudes found in Matthew chapter 5 today. What we want to do is then overlay your church experience with the Beatitudes. So really, what today is about is you assessing how your church is doing in light of Jesus' teaching in the Beatitudes. So first, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. What in the world does that mean? Well, it means blessed are those who recognize that they have nothing to offer a holy God. Blessed are those who realize that they are bankrupt before a holy God in and of themselves and coming to God in that humble posture. He's holy. I'm not. I'm only here by grace. Secondly, it says blessed are those who mourn. Well, what are we supposed to be mourning about? Well, if we just look at the previous beatitude, it was being poor in spirit. So we're actually mourning over our own sin. We've become broken over our own sin. Now, before we continue, let me ask you, how is your local church experience in those two areas? First, being overwhelmed with the holiness of God, and secondly, actually mourning over our sin. And it's not only taught here. Uh, for example, in James chapter 4, James is talking to believers and he says, turn your laughter into mourning. And it's all in the context that we've fallen in love with the world. We're in, we're in bed with the world and we shouldn't be. We're broken over that sin. So how is your church experience? Since this is um, where Jesus started the most famous Christian sermon ever, Certainly in your church, there must be a time of getting low before the Lord, being broken over your own sin. A third, from that posture then, Jesus says, blessed are the meek. In other words, once we've seen ourselves, who we are before a holy God, and we've mourned over it, we have become humble. We're not there to force our own way, our own agendas and so forth. So how's that going in your local church experience that humble posture and, and not just some sort of fake humility where we just defer to everybody else because we want them to accept us, which is actually self-centeredness. That's not what Jesus is talking about in terms of being meek. But how is that going within your church? Well, once we come to this low place, then we feel inside there's got to be more. And Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And the promise with that one is, for they will be filled. If we're hungering for him and thirsting for him, rather than the things of this world, we are gonna be filled. And by the way, this whole idea of a beatitude, it means how do we come to the place of supreme blessedness or the most deeply satisfying fulfillment? What well, goes on from there of blessed are, are the merciful because anybody that has been through this process of those first few Beatitudes, they want to show mercy to other people because they themselves have received mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. How is that going in terms of your church? So many statistics would point to the fact that there's a lot of areas where, whereas the body of Christ were not being pure in heart. Probably at the top of that list would be the, the numbers of Christians struggling with pornography. But that's just one manifestation of many things that could cloud our hearts. How are we doing in that area of being pure in heart? And it goes on from there to talk about um, what will really bring joy. And that it says that we are to rejoice when others persecute us, when others speak evil of us, when others insult us. It's just completely opposite of how we typically uh, think of the successful, or I should say fruitful Christian life. Jesus turns the whole things on its head and actually is saying that if you live this way, you'll be so countercultural, you will be insulted, you will be persecuted, but that's when you should have even more joy. So. Uh, all of this leads up to Jesus' conclusion. When you live this way in the Beatitudes, you will be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In other words, you will be a preservative in the earth as salt was in that day in the meat, or you'll make non-Christians thirsty for Christ, but also we become the light of the world, meaning we are beggars that have found the breadline. Let 
us show you the way or how you can also find Jesus. So let's look at our local church situations. Have we gone low with the Lord so he can bring us high? Are we teaching any theology of suffering that that's actually when we should rejoice through persecution, etc.? How is your church experience? How are we doing as the church in America as it relates to the Beatitudes? We will see you next week on Insights.